Yeah, good Monday. It's always good if you get a nice win, and I think it was, like I said, a good good win for the program. Really proud of the guys. Really how they've been practicing for the most part. And uh, there's just, it's kind of, all the practices have been the same. Very focused, very intense, and if we can kind of keep that that intensity up, you know, we'll continue to grow and get better. But I thought, you know, overall it was, you know, a really good performance. Defense played played really well in terms of getting turnovers. Um, you know, it can be an explosive offense with those receivers they have, and they got the one on us. But other than that, you know, played pretty good. And, and then I think our offense played – um, solid. I think, you know, if we were able to get one more touchdown, um, you know, things would feel a little bit different. But, you know, credit to those guys. Um, they got good coaches and good players over there, too. And so you figure out how to get out of there with a W. How would you evaluate how Jacob Beeson performed in that game? Too? Yeah, I think he was solid. You know, I think he was solid. Um, made some good throws and you know, there's one. There was one in there that we could have got a big one off of. But you know, I thought he thought he played solid. Was USC doing anything to, to kind of take away those throws downfield? Yeah, a little bit. They're mixing up things pretty good and bringing pressure and, and playing coverage and a little bit of a cat and mouse game. After uh, Savon's oh, long are. run, uh, hi. Um, Nick Harris was kind of doing a little dance on the side. Yeah, he likes there. to dance. He kind of got it. What was, I mean, he was not paying attention to what was going on with the game, feeling pretty good about himself, and uh, cost us a timeout. And uh, not just him, but our whole team was not paying attention and cost us a timeout. It's frustrating. So we got to do a better job across the board of just being organized on those things. and. Um, yeah. How do you kind of manage that with also wanting the kids to be enthusiastic and, and have Yeah, you just got to stay locked in, right? I mean, heck yeah, we got to celebrate. Celebrate on the way down to get lined up for two points. And so, like I said, we just got to, you know, as coaches, we got to do, because we knew we were going to go for it, but sometimes you don't want to distract the kids with that because who knows what happens in that series or anything like that. And so I think we got to do a better job of quickly communicating and you know, it's kind of on all of us to get organized on those situations. Not necessarily Saturday, Chris, but did you see a play like that come? Was there, was there, did you get signs that maybe you guys were going to bust out and get a big play like that? Well, I mean, you, you always hope you're going to, you know, and Savon's got, you know, the type of speed that if he does kind of get to the second level that, you know, he's got ability, depending on angles, to, to go the distance. And, um, so I think you always kind of think that when when he's in the game that he could do those things. How do you evaluate Savon's performance after missing BYU last week? Well, I think he had that, you know, one game-changing run, and I thought he did a good job, you know, other than that. But, you know, that's the nice thing about him is if he gets some, some space out there, you never know what can happen, you know, depending on how everybody else fits the run. And, um, you know, I think he's doing a good job. And like I said, he... You know, it wasn't, it was, um, it was just a unique, um, you know, injury that he had. So it wasn't like we just had to make sure he was rested and ready to go and got some swelling out of his leg. And, and so, and it really happened like we hoped it would. So he didn't miss much. Might have made him better. Got his legs fresh. When you look at the tape, or especially defensively, and the decision to play lighter in the box for most of the game, mm -hmm. and then they can get some runs and things like that, how overall did you feel like you guys held up in that area, considering you were willing to kind of pick that point? Yeah, it's really, you know, um, you have to you have to kind of go back and forth. It's just not always a light box, and sometimes it's a heavy box, and sometimes you're disguising things. and. You know, I mean, the one thing that can change the game in a hurry, as we all know, is explosive plays. And so, you know, if teams going to get small chunks, you know, sometimes that can be a little bit painful and, and anxiety provoking. But, you know, that we know how hard it is on offense to, you know, 
go long play drives without explosives. So I thought the guys did, you know, a great job. And um, I think the one thing on defense that you're always kind of nitpicky on is tackling. You know, I think there's a couple times you'd like to tackle better. But again, they got some pretty good athletes and strong runners and all those type of things. So credit to those guys for you know, pulling out of some things. There was a couple of things we didn't fit just quite right that they kind of creased us on them. And, um, you know, it's going to happen when they spread you out. And, um, you know, guys try to fit into gaps from distance and stuff and not quite get there sometimes. With Michael Pippen, for instance, I mean, it, I think going back on the tape, it was almost a quarter and a half before he was even targeted. Um, was that a function of, of you guys taking that away from them? Or were they actually trying to go away a little bit. Well, I think I, I think those things are always like coverage determined, right? I mean, if I, I don't know what their offense, you know, I don't know what they're teaching the quarterback, but I know in general, you know, most times coverage driven, you know, where a quarterback goes with the ball. So, you know, if a guy's pressed, you're working somewhere else or if a guy's got off and underneath, you know, those type of things. And, um, you know, I, I just know in the past, sometimes, you know, people say that's why we're getting the ball to so-and-so more, and sometimes the coverage just doesn't dictate that. There was a kickoff in the third quarter, I think, that Peyton took, where he mm -hmm. uh, chipped it up and it bounced on the third. Mm -hmm. Is that something that has been in the works for a while? Well, Peyton's, you know, he was our kickoff guy last year, and so he could do a lot of different things like that. And he cross kick and sky kick and kick it deep, and Tim's kind of, you know, obviously been handling those kickoff duties with him nice job and so put Peyton in to kind of have some fun. Is that something that you're surprised that more teams don't do more regularly especially with the new touchback rules? Well you can fair catch those and then it just goes to the 25 so you got to pick and choose and try to keep you know people off balance a little bit and um, so you know I think you gotta you gotta it's not like a little bit a few years ago before you could just fair catch it and the ball's always going to go to 25. Um, I think, you know, the kickoff game's changed. You know, there's just not quite as many of them being returned. Um, I think, you know, the powers of B got what they wanted. When you just look at the stats, there's just not as many kickoffs being returned. Chris, going back to uh, your comment about how the team practiced this week, mm -hmm. has that been like that all season or mm -hmm. change? Or no. No, these have been great, great kids. You know, I mean, they, they've they kind of bought into practicing um, hard, um, always, uh, sometimes more efficient than other times. You know, it's always about practicing efficiently with that same kind of attitude and edge. And um, But they've, they've done a really good job. And each week is a unique challenge, you know, offensively, scheme-wise or whatever. We got a different, completely different animal going this week. Um, you know, than the run and shoot and spread that we've been seeing, you know, completely different. And so that'll be a new mental challenge and away we go. On the young DBs, just everything you said, how have they matured and, you know, are they going at the pace that you are? The DBs? Yeah. 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 No, that's good. I mean, because we're playing so many of them, you know, and the, because of the all the receiver sets that we're seeing and, you know, so many of these pass-heavy offenses. So when you got young guys, it's all – there's no substitute for game um, experience. And so to get those guys in and each week you can kind of see guys – um, learning and growing. Sometimes the growing pains, they are growing pains. You know, it's not exactly what you like, but then you can see them, you know, as the game moves on or the next week that we're not going to, you know, hopefully make the same mistake twice. Watching the TV copy, it looked like there was some surprise on the sideline warning. But you looked, you looked a little surprised. By that. Yeah, because I think he was talking about, about me. And I'm like, he talking about me? <laughs> and so he might have been, but I was... You never got clarification on it? Well, I'm not, I don't know if, if he totally knew it was me or another coach, you know, but yeah, it is what it is. I mean, the there was no bump. There wasn't, a, there wasn't a bump into somebody. It was just somebody who was in the white and shouldn't have been. And it could have been me. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What, what a trade do you to get that unsportsman? Um, yeah, I don't know specifically. A little bit of extracurriculars. You know, it kind of happened so far after the play that tape was off and all that. I don't know. So, yeah.
Hope he's a, he's a, he's a little more buff today than he was yesterday, though. <laughs> 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 is, that, is that still 500? The yeah, of course it is. Yeah. How long does that take to do 500? It depends. Depends what kind of shape. The small guys can seem to knock them out a lot, a lot faster than the big guys. So it can be painful for those big guys. You've got a former tight end doing some pretty good things for the other team in town, the Seahawks. Your, your tight ends, Kate and Hunter, just how special are they and what they're doing? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think that's one thing that um, – you know, our offensive staff, Bush and those guys have done a really good job of, you know, playing those two guys together and emphasizing that and kind of not making it always just two tight end sets. They turn into three wide end sets and sometimes even four wide out sets. They can do that with those guys. And so just given, having the flexibility to do multiple things with those guys. And when you have guys like that, we always like it. And to be able to... You know, we think he can keep defenses off off balance, and so, um, so yeah, that's been been really good. What have you seen out of Joel Whitford when he's been able to get you guys? You know, I thought Joel had a really you know a strong game last week. Um, I thought he did a nice job of placing the ball and a nice job of getting the ball out and buying time when we could because I think SC is a real you know notorious heavy pressure team and so sometimes the kickers just want to get it out when they have time to not rush it and so I thought he did a nice job of just playing with poise and then um, you know really placing the ball correctly and and getting distance when we needed it so that was good I thought our special teams in general was was pretty solid um, you know, we had one, I think it was one kickoff return. And they got good kickoff returners. I mean, that's a strength of theirs. We knew that going in. And one, we, we had guys there. We just didn't get off blocks to make the plays. They had like three guys and he somehow squirted through us. And, you know, like I said, sometimes it's pretty good players on the other side too. What's the protocol for calling that double reverse that you guys had to fumble on? Is that just Bush just totally autonomy? Let me just say this. There's going to be calls that don't go right. We're going to try stuff. It's not going to always go right. I mean, that's just how it is. I can't tell you. Everybody seemed to like the little two-point play that was a little tricky. When it works, it's awesome. When it doesn't, you got egg on your face. And we're going to always try stuff. That's just how it is. And sometimes they're going to guess right and time us. Sometimes we're going to get out of it. Sometimes we're going to check them. And it is what it is. Our defense swelled up and it's all good. There's plays every game that both sides, all coordinators would like to have back. But like I said before, that one's on me. We were gonna roll with it, and they hit us with the perfect blitz. You want Hunter just to eat that next time? I mean, but it's, you know, it happens so fast. Yeah, for sure you do. But they called her probably the one thing we didn't want to have them call, and they timed it, and it is what it is. Chris, and your historical kind of philosophy on that type of stuff. And given the sudden change plays. Have you been more prone to want to try to hit big after a, a sudden change play? Like and, and maybe, and I think a lot of guys do. So we don't want to always do that because I think defenses know that. So, um, you know, we were backed up on our side. A lot of times teams get aggressive on the other side of the field, and it needs to not be like that. It needs to be whenever. And you got to be able to take chances. And even sometimes if they don't work, the defenses know that, that you're going to try that. You try a fake field goal and it doesn't work. Like that changes things mentality-wise, and we're going to continue to take chances. We just are. And so we've had a lot of reverses, a lot of stuff that's worked over the years, double passes, all those things. And it's all good when they work. And when they don't, everybody wants to second-guess them. That's just what we're going to keep doing. In scouting Stanford, you said they're a lot different than the teams that you faced already this season. What jumps off the screen when you watch them on tape? Yeah, just their styles different, certainly on offense. You know, multiple tight end team. Always have been a lot of checks. Slow the game down, not a tempo team. Um, so a lot of the teams get, you know, you get less plays. Um, so you got to be efficient with your drives and all those type of things. And so it's, you know, they do some, they do some, yeah, I always think about this, you know, you got three days to prepare for this team, you know, three practice, real practice days. And when everybody's got, that's the beauty of college football is like everybody's got these unique styles from Stanford style to, you know, the Washington state style that couldn't be more different than everything in between. And, 
and they really are different when you're preparing for them, you know, defensively. Um, you know, I think that's one of the real big differences between kind of the NFL and college football. Like, you just see a lot more variety, although it, it can maybe look pretty similar, um, you know, to the unless you're studying the game, but it's not, you know. And so, yeah, much different situation to get ready for this week. How do you, how do you handle sort of their quarterback uncertainty with Costello? I think they're similar again. I mean, they don't change their offense. You know, um, they, again, they might emphasize different calls depending on what their strengths and weaknesses are of each quarterback, but they look very similar to me. And, you know, Stanford's always going to have a big time thrower. They, that's, they're always going to have a good guy in there. And um, they look very similar. With the, with the Peyton Henry kickoff, um, was that an injury with Tim or was that no. a decision? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just put him in. If you look at the other side of Stanford's defense, I'm, I'm not asking you to say stats are for losers, but you look at some of them, there's some very unstanford like numbers, like 52% yeah. down percent. What, what do you see from their defense that's maybe a little different? Than yeah, that's back? a good question. You know, I mean, I... I I don't really look at any of that stuff until maybe I look at I look at the tape, you know, to just kind of see schematically what they're doing and what they play and all that. And then some, then sometimes I'll I'll look at that just to confirm things. And um, yeah, I don't really have an answer for that. I mean. Um, you know, sometimes matchups. Sometimes, you know, they have some new players. I know that, um, and so sometimes it takes a minute to get the new players up to speed. You know, but I, you know, it's just interesting because when you do look at that, they were kind of surprising to me because you see, you know, good stuff. I mean, the tight end is, I don't know how to stop him. You know, I me mean, caught a bunch of balls on his last year. They're doing the same stuff. I mean, you just give him a chance at six, seven, he's going to make plays. Um, I think the running back, you know, Scarlett is shifty. He's strong. Um, Weddington can do some things. You know, he started at running back. They move him out there. And um, and they're all line. They got those big old linemen again. But some of them are new, I know. And they're kind of, you know, probably getting those guys up to speed. And same thing on defense is um, there's some guys that have played for a while. Um, but they got, you know, they got new guys and some new guys as well. And I, I think that they're, you know, growing like most teams are each week. Also curious about, since you have been on the road now, is there something about this this team's maybe attitude or personality that lends itself towards maybe being good road dogs? Or? Well, let's hope. We've only been on the road one time, you know. So, um, and that one, you know, they played great and all those type of things. And um, but yeah. I can probably answer that better in the next two weeks. Chris, on the, the Pittman touchdown on Saturday, yep. the, the breakdown, what, what happened on that play? Yeah, we just, we, we just um, you know, a little play action, kind of settled our feet a little bit in the secondary, and he just got behind us. I think threw a good ball. Sometimes you hesitate for a minute, it's too late. Cam Williams had two picks, and yeah. Elijah Bolden, yeah. his first one. Elijah played a heck of a game. I mean, Elijah's all over the place. He played really, really good. And uh, and Cam, Cam is what well, I mean. To get that, it's really nice when your free safety, you know, gets better. That's a little bit how our defense is designed too, right? I mean, we play him deep, and he's the center fielder, and should be able to cover some ground. And so I think he's 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 getting better every week. On his second interception near the goal line, Cam's. How hard is it to coach a kid to just bat that ball down as opposed to catching it at the one yard line? Yeah, um, do that. hard. Yeah hard I mean I think that comes with experience and all those type of things and yeah that's just a reaction and yeah was that on fourth down yes. yeah how would you assess your guys in state recruiting these past three or four years I think it's solid you know we target the guys and uh, not of them you know I always say this I mean guys should go where they fit the best that's just about the kids. And I think, you know, local kids, a lot of, a lot of them, this place is going to fit them to a T. And if it doesn't, they got to go where they fit the best. Chris, with the, the California governor signing that bill and allowing endorsements, yeah. does, do, do you worry about the effect on, on recruiting? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know how this is going to go, but luckily it's not a problem I have to solve. So good luck to everybody. Chris, following up on that, uh, 
this is with the, with the California setting the precedent. There are likely to be a lot of other states yeah. joining suit, and Washington probably is likely. Um, how big a threat? I realize it's not going to be implemented until 2023, but yeah. you're starting to recruit players pretty soon that are going to be potentially affected by that. How big a threat do you see this? I mean, they got to get figured out. I don't know. I mean, you got to have some rules to play by. And so hopefully they come up with rules to play by. I don't really know. I mean, it, I don't have anything to do with this. You know, we're in it. I mean, you know, if they're not asking me for any advice on this stuff. So I just try to coach the guys and recruit the guys with the rules they give us. But yeah, I mean, I think that's what everybody's concerned about, the recruiting rules. Would you like to have a say in it or have coaches have an input on it? Always. On, on everything. It's the game that we love and spend our whole life doing. So it doesn't matter if it's whatever. Like, we'd always like to have a say because I think we're always trying to do what's best for the game and for kids, contrary to some opinions. It does disrupt the marketplace here. Uh, and, you know, among the solutions people have talked about is the expenses involved in uh, coaching salaries um, is is it, could you see a time when they're could, uh, uh, cutting back salaries would be? I have no idea. You asked me that before. I, I really don't know. I have no idea how this is going to go. And so we'll just adjust and adapt and play by the rules. I mean, that's all I can say. You know, I just try not to spend a bunch of time worrying about stuff that I don't have control over. I really do. Is this a game where Asa Turner might get a little more snaps given he's a bigger guy that you can put him in a slot? We'll see. Um, he, he did a nice job with the snaps he got last game, and I think he's growing each week as well. Another guy, another young guy that's been impressive. You've already kind of gone through the threshold with a few of these guys, like Tim Warren and a couple of the defensive backs in terms of not you know, mm -hmm. not redshirting. Yeah. Are you really getting close with some of these other guys determining whether or not they're going to continue to play and or yeah there's probably you know i mean we're still at the front end of this season so we still have a you know a handful a few games to go before we you know make the decision on a couple other guys but for the most part i think it's settled out but we're, there's still a couple guys depending on you know injury here injury there that we could go a different way with you yeah. know you mentioned Stanford being kind of a different animal than yep. what we've seen. The crowd most certainly will also be different than yeah. what we saw at BYU. You yeah. kind of have to almost create your own energy. Yeah, I, I think I think every environment's unique and different. And I think, you know, time of the game is different. You know, I don't know if that helps or hurts things down there, but for sure it's a different atmosphere. Yeah. Is, it, is it harder sitting around all day when you're on the road versus at home? Is it, does it mm. matter? Mm. No. Well, yes, because then you know you're going to get home really late, late for the kids and all those type of things. So, But the actual sitting around is kind of all the same. That, that was talked about some after Cal got home late after the game here. Mm -hmm. what, what effect does that have when you have, uh, when you're the road team and you get home late like that, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning? What, what kind it's of impact later, does that yeah. have? Yeah. It's going to be later than that. I think it has a big effect. I do. I think it has a really big effect. I mean, you just feel it. Like the next day, you feel it, and you can feel it the day after. And you know, just kids got to get up, go to school now, and practice hard, and do all those things. And it's, they feel it. Good. Yep.